Nowadays, an impression can be obtained that life is all about success, that it is almost the goal of existence. Recently, I started to be an adult, and this thought crossed my mind while observing the pressure of success emerging in me and among all my colleagues. The thing is that we begin to feel fear about our future professional life. One of the factors that makes us feel anxious is that today our success is judged and on the basis the social hierarchy is created. I will give you my perspective on this today. I will focus mainly on the way how the concept of success impacts our society and discuss its effects. I will try to prove you how pointless it is to judge others through the prism of success. At the outset, the Oxford Dictionary suggests that success is the fact of achieving something that you always want and have been trying to get. For example, becoming rich, famous. And I will refer to this understanding of success, strictly to the aspects of career, position and professional successes. I would also like to point out that I will only address the sociological aspects, deliberately ignoring the subjective understanding of success and individual view on happiness. So I will focus on the patterns of behaving and forms of pressure that exist in society regardless of how individuals perceive reality. Two factors contribute to the pressure of success in our society. First one, success is considered a great value in our minds. And second, we are rated through its prism and on this basis a social hierarchy is created. Success is associated with a fruitful career, high earnings and professional accomplishments. There is also a very strong belief, almost a certainty in society, that successful people are happy. It's because they have one in the world is exclusive and desirable, so money and career. However, success is also something more. As I said, it's a social position. So we conclude that it expresses a certain social hierarchy of the society in which your position depends on the scale of success you represent. And here something weird happens. The phenomenon of glorifying successful people. They are assigned values and features which are not an incorrect part of the concept of success. But when we But when we define someone as successful, we make several assumptions about this person, like his good education, extensive experience, intelligence, soft skills, and management skills. I believe uh, Donald Trump and the fact of him becoming the president is a good example here. So the point of this is the need to find a reason why these people are so successful at certain tasks or job. And since we assume such a far-reaching realization of successful people, we begin to attribute to them also enormous authority and trust, which again, do not have to be part of their personality. So, success in public opinion is a synonym of socially desirable qualities, affluence and character traits. It is also equated with happiness and expresses a high social position. And due to that, success is so highly valued and greatly desired. The catalyst for the pressure is, however, the second of the factors I mentioned. The fact of being apprised to the prism of success. This is because we socially adopted success as a criterion for creating a social hierarchy. So judgment is just a tool that creates this hierarchy and therefore it's so crucial for the whole issue. You see, at every stage of our lives we are judged and success is required from us. It's expressed through our dad's stereotypical desire for his son to be the best footballer. Then through school practice pressure for good grades. And finally, with a rat race on the way to college and obsession to find a well-paid job. So studies, school, work, our success and career is measured everywhere. It determines our social position and the way we are perceived in society. It's important that it's judged by people who are considered as authorities by us, especially in the early ages of our lives. So, our parents, friends, teachers, the entire school community, as well as the fact 
when you're surrounded by examples of successful people that start to follow your career paths that have already been chosen. Again, our parents and celebrities on whom we model ourselves. And you see, the thing is that we cannot stay indifferent to all of that. All these factors, all these people influence in some way. So, what are the effects? The pressure that is imposed on people is destructive to them. A huge problem is that such a person through social pressure and kind of indoctrination of this concept begins to treat success as a priority. A society requiring success begins to create a necessity of it in the mind of the young person. And so it begins to grow in his consciousness as an obligatory goal of functioning in our society. And again, this is because if success is equated in the human mentality closely correlates with happiness and the pressure is thrown on the young child by parents and school, the entities that shape him most, whom he trusts the most. For example, it's no longer just our parents' little secret dream of their son becoming a CEO, but the pressure that is placed on by parents and the position that's identified socially with success and happiness. These aspects create and transmit a huge need, a huge pressure to become one. Research shows that as much as 60% of young British between the age of 18 and 24 are so stressed by the pressure to succeed that they feel un uh, unable to cope with it. So it can be seen that the very fact of creating such enormous pressure can be destructive for young people. Focusing on achieving professional successes can lead to being unhappy. It can prevent them from developing hobbies and passions just because they are considered low paid. And also, the size of the challenge makes them feel afraid and scared of the future. The negative aspect of combining success and happiness can occur here. It may turn out that a successful person is not happy at all. That happiness, the prospect of happiness that was instilled in him from the beginning, never came. Then this person has a huge dissonance. He exists in society that constantly postulates that success is happiness, but then he is not happy after all. What about unsuccessful people? A tremendous amount of work and time put into it, which ultimately did not achieve the intended goals, will result in feeling of waste in your life. Due to prioritization and enormous ambitions for success, failure will result in low self-esteem. So, as you see, in both groups, either either successful or unsuccessful people, pressure of success can cause mental issues, communication problems, or even alienation and stigmatization. I will now return to the subject I raised at the beginning of my speech, which is the pointlessness of all of it. The complete redundancy and injustice that this whole powerful mechanism entails. To address this topic, I will talk you through the situation that began my whole idea of this TED talk. I started to think about this issue by reading some comments about one of the F1 races. For sake of clarification, F1 is just cars racing on track where drivers compete for the highest places. And while reading these comments, I came across this discussion that I showed me very much. There were two drivers discussing it. The first one is blessed with an incredible talent, exceptional skills and speed. The second one is a good driver, but his father secured him a place in racing by buying him an F1 team. Public opinion significantly elevated the driver of great talent and followed him over the rich one. Somehow we begin to like and exalt the driver with the talent more than the one with money. However, I started to analyze these two factors which make them successful. So, one driver was given a talent which scale is unique throughout the whole history of the sport. On the other hand, the second one was born in a wealthy family which enabled him to get into the sport. However, none of them had the slightest influence on receiving this trait. It was assigned to them randomly at birth. However, this trait is so important that it determines and defines their lives. Drivers are therefore characterized 
based on the factor that is completely independent of them. Moreover, it's judged completely subjectively through the prism of a certain social conviction that talent is nobler than money. However, the rich driver suffers from it because both factors are equally uninfluenced by them. But still, they determine how they are valued as drivers and as people. So, we can see here the pointlessness of valuing one success based on talent over another based on money. They depend on several various factors that we could not choose or predict. But this mechanism also works in other situations and it similarly shows the absurdity of making success a criterion that determines uh, hierarchy or social position. Success depends on thousands of factors and most of them are beyond our control. Most of them are given to us at birth, like talents, intellect, preferences, development opportunities related to live in a certain country, or a family which again is crucial to other development, or even a gender which cannot, which cannot unfortunately still be an obstacle nowadays. All these above mentioned factors, elements of our personality, or factors setting our reality, are completely independent of us, or our consciousness, but they are fundamental and crucial for our lives. Success is only the product of cause and effect chain that guides every element of our life. There are also many factors responsible for that that we today dress in this particular way. Fashion, culture, our wealth, the form of event we tended to. Everyone realizes that in this case, some factors influence our decision. However, judging success, we begin to ascribe to men some divine agency total responsibility for a state of affairs. But yet, too many factors are completely independent of him to consider it true. So, since a man is not responsible for his success, can it be regarded as a basis for creating hierarchy, a reason for the pressure that can cause mental issues, or a cause to idolizing people? Well, I'm leaving up to you. I would like to leave with a quote which somehow sums up my whole TED talk. I hope you'll think of it, but even more, I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you.